I'm curious how this uh, deterrence works, particularly in the case of like a hegemonic dictator that's willing to allow a lot of suffering on his people. But if you don't disarm him via counterforce responses, he still may be able to uh, escalate. Can you be more specific about uh, yeah. who that adversary is? Uh, I, I, I don't have anyone in particular in mind, but you could certainly imagine a larger scale situation like post Iraq, where you have a particular dictator you disagree with, and his use of force ends up creating a situation in which you have to inflict mass suffering on a lot of civilians as part of this counter infrastructure deterrence. I mean, if you take out water treatment plants and power and- If you attack us first? Yeah. If nuclear weapons? Well, then we do it. I mean, but uh, save that, uh, we wouldn't. I mean, there's one mission. And the only mission is to counterattack someone who attacks us with nuclear weapons, period. That's it. No, no elaborate- uh, There's no escalation strategy. Well, and, uh, no elaborate plans like we've always had. I mean, that that's the, the, the message of this report here is we're shrinking things down and getting away from the strain we've been on for 45 years, the counterforce strain, which has um, caused a, uh, uh, an intense arms race with, with the Soviet Union, who was doing the same thing. Uh, accuracy, uh, War plans that uh, protracted nuclear wars, um, leadership targets, uh, hardening, uh, underground stuff, all that stuff's gone, gone. And we're only gonna have one. To deal with these other issues, well, we have a big Pentagon and they can deal with other things. But we're talking about a nuclear mission, very constricted, shrunken down, and, and that's it. If I understand your question correctly, though, you're, you're arguing that deterrence won't work against this guy, and so we can't depend on deterrence, so therefore we have to maintain his capability, destroy his forces on the ground yeah. to before he can fire at us. And uh, we'll make the argument that the, there's often cases in which you're trying to sell nuclear weapons, and that was the case of the robust nuclear earth penetrator, where you're having to create these uh, remarkably, uh, of, of, you know, uh, tailored uh, hypothetical situations to justify nuclear weapons, that they have them buried out of reach of conventional weapons, but not so deep that they uh, can't be reached even by nuclear weapons. We have to know where they are. You know, Saddam Hussein uh, escaped capture even after we had occupied the country, not because he was in a deep tunnel, right? He was in a farmhouse. He just didn't know which farmhouse. And they could have had chemical weapons or biological weapons in that farmhouse. It's just, if you, uh, whenever there's justification for a nuclear weapon, the uh, first use of nuclear weapons and this uh, counterforce use of nuclear weapons, just keep asking specifics of how are you going to do this, how are you going to do this, how are you going to do this, and there's nothing there when you're done. And you're just, the, we don't have the intelligence, the collateral damage will be unacceptable, the effects are unpredictable. Uh, if we can't do it with conventional weapons, then we can't do it with nuclear weapons.